It is time for the footy award winners, the greatest is so heavy. Uh, the greatest award show in all the land. We get to find out who the best players were for fantasy, who broke your heart, and most importantly, who had the best nickname of the year? What was the best show moment? Stay tuned, like the video, subscribe, and stay with us all season. But right now, we get you to the footies. Was one of your resolutions this year to order less takeout? Well, HelloFresh sends everything you need to get dinner on the table, no meal planning, all deliciousness. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS16 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS16. And do you have an account with Coinbase? Are you thinking about opening one? you have any Bitcoin, Ethereum, any other crypto? Well, you can get into investing in crypto and do it in a tax advantage retirement account. Alto IRAs, crypto IRA, is the easiest way to get into crypto in an IRA. That is a tax advantage retirement account. You could trade all you want without the tax headache. And you could do it with as little as $10. Secure trading 24-7 through Alto's integration with Coinbase, 80 plus coins available, industry leading security, the advanced encryption standard for wallets and private keys. There are multiple ways to fund your account. You can make a cash contribution, transfer cash from an existing IRA or roll over to uh, from an old 401k. If you're ready to take your investments to the next level, diversify like the pros and trade without tax headaches, Open an Alto Crypto IRA with as little as $10. Just go to altoira.com slash footballers. That's A-L-T-O-I-R-A dot com slash footballers. Start investing in cryptocurrency today. Go to altoira.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Back again. Thursday, January 13th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Playoff time has arrived, and every year I pride myself on getting this bracket perfectly correct, and I always do. Please don't check the tape. Yeah, Please you... Please uh, don't check the tape. You are batting 100% um, for sure. Sh- <laughs> That's what they sure. say in baseball. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred. You're batting a hundred percent. I don't do baseball. I don't do baseball <laughs> references here. You get that no. nonsense out of my life. Um, batting a thousand, Jason, just for future. If you're in a conversation and in the future, that's what you would say. Which uh, I, Jason, I would never say that. To Jason's, Jason's credit, <laughs> to say something like "I'm doing this a thousand. What is that? What? Yeah, that's busted. Like what baseball. Are you, what are you talking about? You're doing something a thousand. So now Mike has turned from Jason being dumb to baseball is dumb. Well, whenever I could take a shot. Yes. We are very excited today to have the Footy Award winners. Thank you to everybody that participated in the vote. You have been part of history. The That's U- what I want. I, w- I want to get that across. You are part of history. The USPS right now, the United States Postal Service, this is the time of the it, you, a lot of people think Christmas is their big right. time. This is the time right now right. where the mail service, because the footies are out for delivery, I mean, this is the time that they well, are. Well, they're not out yet, Jason, because the, they don't know who won yet. But today, they'll yes. go. They'll go out. And what's even and this crazier is not a- about the footy is it weighs, the, the actual statue weighs 372 pounds. It's incredibly heavy. <laughs> You'll never The difficult it part is during this uh, very factual exchange here. <laughs> I was going to make the identical joke about the weight of the footies because it's not the it's not the quantity. No. There's not a lot that go out. It's just that it takes a lot of USPS workers to deliver them. It's it's a team effort because they're heavy. Um, a trophy we, is only as valuable as its weight. Right. It's <laughs> that's, true. That's why they. That's what they say. And we are the heaviest trophy out there. <laughs> But we've got all the award winners. I'm really excited to uh, to find out. I don't I don't know the winners. I don't know the final winners. 
I peeked in at some of the results early, but uh, there were a ton of close races, and I'm excited to give those away. Uh, before we do that, a couple of uh, a couple of things we've got going on. We'll catch you up on some news as well, but we do have the NFL Playoff Challenge at FootClanChallenge.com. That is a just a fun, free playoff challenge thing that we do every year, and the Foot Clan community is uh, always participated, and it's it's just a good time. I believe. Uh, about 10 minutes after we opened it up to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, re reactivated it from last year, we were the largest group. That's um, right. So the Foot Clan, you're undefeated. And without further ado, we said this on Tuesday that we were going to get into our actual brackets and our Super Bowl picks. We each filled one out um, by ourselves. <laughs> no cheating, Jason. No cheating. <laughs> Well, I mean, I imagine you'd want a copy off of me. It makes sense. Because you're batting 100? I'm batting 100%, as they say. <laughs> um, let's start with the AFC playoffs, the Cincinnati-Las Vegas matchup. All right. Who do you guys have in that one? I have Cincinnati at home taking it down. I also have Cincinnati winning the game. I went Cincinnati as well. Oh, I thought boo. about it. I thought uh, Buffalo, New England. Buffalo is at home in this one. The three seed, New England, the six seed. Who do you guys have here? I have Buffalo once again at home winning. I have the upset. I have the New England Patriots uh, okay. rising to the occasion and, and taking down the division rival. I went with Buffalo in that matchup. Kansas City, Pittsburgh, I believe. I mean. I took I mean, this is Kansas City. Kansas City yeah. has a first round bye. <laughs> Sorry, Pittsburgh. I'm happy you're there. Like, that's really cool story for you, but it's time to go home. So does that make your bracket different with the reseeding then, Mike? Does that yeah, move New so England? I have to... I have Tennessee versus New England. And who do you have winning that matchup? Tennessee. Okay. I'm giving them some credit. I do so Jason and I both have Tennessee Cincinnati then and uh I have Tennessee winning that matchup. I do as well. So I guess that side of the bracket, we are all three Tennessee. The, that means the other side of the bracket, Mike. What is your matchup there? Kansas City and Kansas uh, City Cincinnati? Cincinnati, yep, which I do. I have the former Super Bowl champs winning that one getting into the AFC Finals. So I have Tennessee versus Kansas City for my championship week. As do I. We just had a different yeah. path to get there. Yeah, different path, but Tennessee, Kansas City, and the AFC. That uh, is what I have as well, Kansas City over Buffalo. So Tennessee uh, at home facing Kansas City in the AFC title game with Tennessee the number one seed, and I have Tennessee winning that Ooh, game. There you go. Yeah. And they just, making it They deserve to the, somebody to the taking Bowl. them into the Super Bowl for – everything that they have accomplished the most disrespected one seed of all time because yeah. we're just it's like it seems fake still but it's like you lost everybody and you're the number one seed and now you're gonna get these players back julio's healthy you might have king henry back i mean this is this is great news and obviously aj brown is back i i don't have tennessee winning i have kansas city winning yeah me too i so. was <laughs> But I wanted to, you know, give you a little fluff, a little excitement. Good job, uh, Tennessee. But, uh, yeah, Kansas City, their defense is going to carry them to the Super Bowl. All right, then, on the other side in the NFC playoffs, we have opening matchups of Rams, Arizona, Dallas, San Francisco, and Tampa Bay, Philly. So who do you have in the Rams, Arizona matchup? I'm taking the road upset. I am taking the Arizona Cardinals. Uh against the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde version of the Los Angeles Rams where you never know which one will show up, and I think Arizona can take down a win on the road. I agree that you have no idea what the Rams, uh, which Rams will show up, but I think the good version will show up, and the Cardinals have sucked for the second half of the year, so I, I've got the Rams winning this game. I thought I'd be alone taking Arizona. I did take the upset in that one. I think it'll be a close game. They split the series this year, and um, – it's going to come down to Stafford throwing interceptions or not. So sure. I think it'll be a, a good game on Monday Night Football. I took Arizona. Uh, Dallas, San Francisco. I actually went with the upset here, too. I took San Francisco on the road in Ooh, Dallas. I did as well. I think San Francisco is one of those teams you don't want to face in the playoffs, and I've got them beating Dallas on the road. I don't want to face Dallas in the, in the playoffs, so I will take Dallas over San Francisco. Jimmy G and uh, his busted hand. Did all of us take Tampa Bay over Philly? 
Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. So that means uh, seating-wise, with Mike and I having the upset, that puts Arizona traveling to Tampa Bay and uh, San Francisco traveling to Green Bay. And I took uh, the favorites in both of those, Tampa Bay and Green Bay. Well, I have Arizona against Green Bay because I have Dallas winning. So it's Oh, that's right. So that's Green right. Bay versus Arizona. I have the Packers taking that one, though. Yep, and I've got Green Bay against San Francisco. I've got Green Bay beating the 49ers. I've got the Los Angeles Rams against Tampa Bay, and I took the upset there. I think the Rams are in the NFC Championship game and win over the wide receiverless Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mike Evans is still there. I know Mike Evans is there, but my point is they are really hurting. They lost another wide receiver in practice this week. Obviously, Antonio Brown is gone, and an ACL to Godwin. It, when I, whenever I look at who wins a Super Bowl, they had a, a ton of health luck, and I just don't I don't look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. with. Okay. I know they got Fournette maybe coming back and Bernard, but they've got a lot of injuries they're dealing with. I have Tampa right. Bay beating Dallas, getting into the championship match. So that means our championship is the same? All three of us? The Bays? The Battle of the Bays? Oh, Not no, wait. Mike has, Mike has the – or Jason has the Rams. Yes. All right, so Green Bay, Tampa Bay is my uh, NFC title game. I have Green Bay going to the Super Bowl. As do I. Yes, do I. So do we all three have – because we've, we've done this every no, year. No, I have Tennessee, Tennessee, Green Bay. Oh, that's right. I've got Kansas City, Green Bay, Green Bay beating the Rams. And yeah. who is the champ? So I, I went with Green Bay over Tennessee in the Super Bowl. I've got Green Bay over Kansas City in the Super Bowl, which I believe was also my preseason pick. Ooh, very nice. Uh, I've got Kansas City over Green Bay in the Super Bowl. Well, there you have it, Brooks. Who, hey, Brooks, just give us our, uh, give us your pick for the Super Bowl champion. Do you have somebody that you? Uh, are you going Dallas? <laughs> no, I'm not. I will go with the Bengals versus the Buccaneers. Oh, baby, oh, yeah. the Bengals. Let's go. That would be really fun. No, no, that's not it. You didn't pick the champ, Brooksy. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> go with uh, Brady and the Bucks. He's doing this off the top of his head. Like Very it. nice. So Brady and the Bucks uh, overcoming. I mean, they do have Gronkowski. That that is uh, Gronkowski and Gronk, Evans is going to have to Gronk, fuel them Gronk. in that defense. It'll be uh, a fun, a fun one to watch. And we've got a weekend full of playoff games coming up. So let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. Judgment Day. Oh, do 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 do. I believe two, mo two months ago. I was just ago, getting every judge reference oh, in we okay. could. Two months ago, Joe Judge was given a full ringing endorsement for management. Two, and now he's been fired ago. as the head coach. <laughs> two days ago, he was given a ringing endorsement. Yeah. Full house cleaning in New York. So uh, Joe Judge is out. And he will take his uh, laps and push-ups back to high school or wherever he ends up. And we will have a new head coach and a new regime change here in, in New York. Yeah, it, it stinks uh, on one hand. You know, the New York Giants now, this is several coaches in a row that have gotten two years in and then they are fired. They did not want to continue repeating the cycle, but this is the right decision to make. They, It's clear to everyone inside and around the organization that Joe Judge was not who they hoped he would be. He was not liked or revered. And, you know, it's like, okay, we don't want to fire him because it's been only two years again. But then are you, are you better off as a franchise? Just wait. Well, we like to throw this year away and wait. And then right. next year we'll fire him. Um, get a head start. And hopefully, you know, with Dave Gettleman retiring, that means they're going to get a GM first. Hey, that's me. <laughs> um, and then uh, that GM will pick their head coach of choice. So they've got they got some work to do in New York. I think they are still considering throwing the season away with Daniel Jones, though. Just keep that in mind. Well, they might not have a choice. I mean, it's it's quarterbacks are hard to come by, and uh, he's the guy they have. All right, the uh, the Texans are going to wait till the end of the week to finalize whether they're going to keep this David Coley. This is ridiculous, ridiculous. I was like, kind of a. Uh, breaking the news to Jason yesterday in the but like in a trap joking way of like you know just how they're how dirty they are doing David Coley how do you not know at mm -hmm. this point you've watched an entire season of what the guy you picked 
did he succeed or did he fail given the circumstances that he was a head coach in the NFL? You and, had the schedule. You yes. had your schedule. You knew when the season was over. This is not like, <laughs> really, oh, man, now we got to – what? It snuck up on us. <laughs> there's, there's literally a day named Black Monday because the yes. whole league knows this is when decisions are made. And at least with the Giants, they kind of made their decision and then they went <laughs> at it undo a couple right. days later. But to not know and say we need more – what more time do you need? And and personally, I think he should stick around. They played hard for him. He he couldn't have done much more with less talent. So, um, yeah, I, I think he deserves another year. Yeah, I it's it's kind of ridiculous that these teams go through these type of situations. But somebody normally has to take the blame for a bad season, one way or another. Um, Brian Flores will interview for the Bears head coaching job. By the way, I wonder, I wonder if maybe some of these delays have to do with, like they got a team of social media people in a room and they float a rumor out. Oh, we're interviewing this coach. We're interviewing that coach. We may fire this. We may. F and then they just watch. Sure. And they see the reaction <laughs> because it's like, is it the court of public opinion or is it the best man for the job? Because I don't know sometimes the way that things go, and it's, we might keep David Culley. Okay, let's go to the computers. What are people saying about that? We gotta check the polls. Yeah, it, it feels that way sometimes. Or maybe uh, uh, maybe the Giants unexpectedly, you know, they saw that Brian Flores was fired, and they're like, oh, uh, <laughs> we could. Well, Our a, job is also available. Right. Now, what do you think about uh, Coach, like, what do you think the social media uh, sentiment was when it was announced Bill O'Brien was being interviewed for the Jaguars job. I uh, just, I know it was very positive from my account <laughs> yeah. um, because that you would want just, him back? Uh, oh man. Business as usual in Jacksonville. That would be so much fun. I mean, get Bob back into the experience. I want Adam Gase back. I want, um, you think the Card Cardinals start making trade offers for all the best Jags the second that happens? Yeah, yes. Yes. Get Bill O'Brien in there so we can pilfer your team. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, so, yeah, that's a rumor. But, I mean, I think the Jaguars have 10 candidates they've announced that they're interviewing or something of that nature. Uh, Bears have a ton of them as well. Broncos have a ton. So, I mean, it it's not worth going through every single one of them and talking about implications. And all the bad teams are interviewing a million people and now trying not to hire another bad coach. Uh, Mike Williams said he would like to return to Los Angeles in 2022. Uh, I, you know, why not bring him back? If, if, if you have the rapport with the young quarterback, I don't understand why you wouldn't. It just comes down to money. That's true. All right. Uh, <laughs> Sam Darnold will be back. According to Panthers GM, Scott Fitterer, for the 2022 season. Uh, qu um, and the quote was actually, we don't really have a choice. Which is the honest truth. I, I mean, mean they, it yeah, that's what it should have been. <laughs> they they picked up his fifth-year option, and we all knew that they did it way too quickly. Yeah. Like, they, I mean, there they was thought, no reason to do it yet. They, they like, hadn't seen him. They're like, yeah, immediately. They thought they were pulling off a heist. And they're like, we're getting Sam Darnold. Remember when he was, like, the number two overall pick? We're getting him crazy I'll cheap. be back. Yeah. I don't. Oh, oh, this is the Donalds. I don't blame the idea because they are right. If he came in and was the starter and had yeah. a good year, eighteen million is nothing. Like, what's Kirk Cousins getting forty million this year or something? Um, so, yeah, I, I, eighteen million is fine. The problem is you that Sam Donald sucks. Did they think it, that you could do the cart before the horse thing? Like, if we yeah. pay him, then he'll be good. Because I believe they, they, Mike Glennon was once offered a deal like that. Yeah, yeah. they tried if to Oprah it. Him. Yes, yeah. they tried to get a big deal. And, and Jason, did you? I know Andy saw it. Did you see the the video of head coach Matt Ja Rule trying to explain why they picked up the option? I, I did see it, yes. <laughs> it was, you can I, find it on my Twitter right now. Like, it's, just looking at a grown man squirm and having absolutely no answer for why he did something. Just, uh, 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 and, well, and why did he look like he just came out of a dryer? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, he, like the season, his he looked like a guy who really had a rough season, because he disheveled, he did. <laughs> stuttering. Yeah, yeah, it was a rough season. Uh, like they've also let go uh, level. three of their assistant coaches. It's uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not certainly me, it's their them. fault. Yeah, it was yeah. their fault. It's, yeah, the assistants. Um, my favorite part was when he said, 
it was a collective decision to give him the the fifth year option for eighteen million. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, look, it, he's not the general certainly manager. Wasn't. He's he's <laughs> obviously got a lot of power, but um, when I watched that video, I didn't think it was quite as bad as most people were making it out because the logic. Aww. does stand there a little bit and Aww, also jaw rule sympathizer well, i am a jaw rule you sympathizer oh, murder. <laughs> i i think he's gonna i think he's gonna succeed this next year it's good to have it's nice because you are finally in my position like i was there with gus bradley i was there with hugh jackson mm. and here you are you know look at your face you're a man who knows yes. i know he's got one is. more year one more year of jokes I is all you got there left is a path for me to be there and i'm hoping that the path takes a, a turn up i wouldn't go gus bradley's a good comp i wouldn't go to hugh jackson because it made no sense why you ever liked him he's just terrible <laughs> hugh jackson if you if i know it's a meme now but there was a time that he got a head coaching job for a reason because he was a great offensive mind yes, he was offensive in, in in oakland so uh, all i'm saying is that <clears throat> i want you to i want you to give me the path because sam darnold's back so is it the rookie quarterback or is it Sam Darnold that's going to get him his job back? They will certainly. They're an aggressive team, and they they say that they're bringing Darnold back because he's under contract. But they will one hundred percent go hard at every single veteran quarterback out there. So I don't necessarily think it's Sam Darnold back. If it is for sure, week one, Sam Darnold is the starter. Then no, it's it. Matt Ja Rule is fired at the end of the season because the Panthers have a bad year. If it's uh, Deshaun Watson, the story's different, exactly. probably. Uh, Adrian Peterson, guys, breaking news, would like to play in 2022. Okie dokie. All right. Um, is it time? Is it almost time? It it's, is it's almost, almost. almost time for the footies. Before we get to those great awards, I want to thank today's sponsors. I want to thank Keeps. It's a new year, a new me, a new hair. Two out of oh. three men. They're going to experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness, but there are two FDA-approved medications that can help prevent hair loss, and Keeps offers both of them. They have the generic versions, and they have a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. A virtual doctor consultation is convenient. It's done from your home. The medications delivered straight to your door. Treatment start at just $10 a month. It is very easy. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. And prevention is key because treatments could take four to six months to see results. So you want to act fast. And if you're ready to take action and prevent your hair loss, go to keeps.com slash footballers. You're going to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers to get your first month free keeps.com slash footballers hair loss stops with keeps folks we want to thank bespoke post for sponsoring today's show this winter upgrade your daily routine with bespoke post and their new seasonal lineup a must-have box of awesome collections bespoke post they partner with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every month i have received several boxes from bespoke post and it's always just like super cool stuff i got this uh uh hatchet for mm -hmm. when you're out in the wilderness taking care of things jason you got Dude, this cool i have fire this pot. little little fireplace that i can make s'mores right in my living room with i use it almost every day it's one of those things where it's like you, you go check out what they have and it's just really really cool stuff that shows up right to your door and to get started you take a quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories, and each box costs 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. It's free to sign up. You can skip a month or cancel any time. And right now, you can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Code FOOTBALLERS for 20% off your first box. <laughs> it's the Funny Awards! I feel like you need yeah, a, a baby. real funny voice when you have this music on. Oh, welcome in here, man. Oh, baby. Let's get to some awards. 
Uh, by the way, if you do want full playoff matchup breakdowns, you can catch them on the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast because DFS is still going strong. That's right. Uh, footy award time. Oh, my goodness. So very exciting. We will begin with the performance of the year. Which single week performance was the most impressive on the season? Our nominees for performance of the year were Jonathan Taylor, week 11, Jamar Chase, week 17, Travis Kelsey, week 15, Justin Herbert, week 5, and Joe Burrow in championship, or, uh, the semifinals, week 16. And the winner is... The rookie, mm -hmm. Jamar Chase. No doubt about it. Championship week against the Kansas City Chiefs. He brought in a cool... 55% of the vote probably to go for his 50-plus fantasy points that he dropped in the most important matchup of the season. Johnny Taylor, Week 11, was the runner-up. But congratulations, okay. Jamar Chase. Your footy Wait. is being uh, – it, it's in freight. Yes, <laughs> yes, your footy <laughs> is in the freight. Uh, Mike, I didn't know. So we've got the envelopes. Yes. You're, you're reading from an envelope. And so it has the This is a very and fancy occasion. Brooks, have we always done that? Have I been opening envelopes for years without remembering? I think at least the last couple of years. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah no, I knew Good. for sure that you that the answer to that question was. Yep. I I feel like we even had a year where we sealed them, and we realized what a mistake <laughs> that was to having to try and fumble and bumble and unseal all these envelopes. But anyway, so the performance of the year, as voted by the Foot Clan, was Jamar Chase. All right, All right, our next award, the Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year. Which player's painful injury hurt fantasy managers the most? Okay, the nominees here are Christian McCaffrey, again, last year's winner <laughs> oh, of this award. Man. Has anyone ever back-to-back? -back? Uh, no, not yet. We'll find out. Um, Derek Henry, who obviously King Henry, still the running back 16 after missing half the year, Raheem Mostert, the entire season gone, and DeAndre Hopkins, the winner, goes to with another 55% wow. of the vote is Christian McCaffrey. Oh, no. Your second horrible footy is in the freight. That's Runner. when we, this award we actually charged – the recipient for the freight. Like, oh, we, yeah. We pay for it for the rest of the awards, but this one they do have to pay on receipt. It's the least we can do for the Foot Clan to make sure they know that they are getting charged for what they have done to you. <laughs> I um, I voted for Derrick Henry. but that's I did because as well. It, it, it impacted me uh, <laughs> in a very in a more meaningful way. Yeah, I mean, uh, the truth is a lot of people voted for Derrick Henry. He was runner-up at 38% of the vote, but... You know, the, the truth is he helped people get to the playoffs. And in our leagues, we play in like four main leagues together. And three of the four had Derrick Henry managers in the championship game. And two of those won the championship. They overcame. Um, so, quick question. Christian McCaffrey, top two pick next year? You going back in? I I won't have him in my top two, no. Jonathan top Taylor two, will be the... No Sorry, go, go ahead, ahead, Andy. Uh, go I was ahead. just gonna say it's not uh, top two. No, I was gonna agree with Jason. I think uh, I think he's number three though. Okay, do you, who do you have it to behind Johnny Taylor? Derrick Henry. I think Derrick Henry might be my one. Based really? On the, based on the playoffs, uh, I think Derrick Henry may be the one on one. That that was when I thought to myself, "Is he in the top two? My response was Jonathan Taylor's one and Derrick Henry's two. You know that that Derrick Henry was also up for this award. Once it, you all, <laughs> Derrick Henry did not win okay. the award in back to back season. So this is a fool me twice. Shame on you. Also, the nice thing is we are about to see the health of Derrick Henry, right? If he comes back for the playoffs and looks good, you're not going to question going into next year. Yeah. Could all be right. a trap. Our, <laughs> yeah, that see, I, I hope that narrative persists out there because I will finally draft Derrick Henry 101 in, in because of that or or later maybe i'll have the third or fourth pick and uh, i'll get yeah. derrick henry there because of of people like we'll you we'll see we'll see all right poopiest pants award uh another Number honor we two. charge you for yeah 
<laughs> uh, despite high expectations, this player let down fantasy managers over and over again. This is a bust award. This is a, a disappointment. Uh, looking at average draft position, all of those things. Who let who let players down the most? Who let the poop out? Yeah, whose woof, pants are full? Woof, woof. <laughs> the nominees for poopiest pants award. Uh, you don't want to be in this category. But Miles Sanders drafted in the fourth. Allen Robinson drafted at the back of the third. Terry McLaurin, one spot ahead of Allen Robinson. Darren Waller at the top of the third. Or Saquon Barkley, the much maligned hemming and hawing. Do I take Saquon Barkley in the first round? The answer was no, you should not have. But Saquon Barkley at the 108 as the running back eight. And the winner is... Allen Robinson at 53%. Saquon Barkley was the runner-up. So, speaking of runs, he still had some in, in, oh, in his pants. Oh, man. But Allen Robinson, uh, who received my vote because he personally attacked me as well. Uh, so, I was going to say, <laughs> I knew you would vote for Allen Robinson because you drafted him. I knew I would vote for Saquon because I drafted him in the listener league. So, Andy, you're the more impartial. Who did you vote for on this award? I voted for Saquon Barkley. Okay, yeah. it, it makes sense being in the first round. And by the way, that's, that away. that's exactly how you should be voting. You should be voting on the pain caused you because that will mm -hmm. actually reflect the totality of this season. Yeah, and apparently Alan Robinson caused the most pain and your footy is in the freight. <laughs> Saquon Barkley at least had some playable weeks. Which is what the real problem was because then you kept relying on him. Alan Robinson, eventually you just cut bait. Yeah, but you had to go like, Four weeks, four weeks deep before you're like, or more. Yeah, it it Mike, was not you, easy. You traded him Robinson. for a third round pick in like the fifth or sixth week of the season. People, I did. because you, you you wanted to believe. Yeah, yeah, good job. <laughs> All right, number four, our fourth award here, the waiver wire wonder, which undrafted waiver wire stud was the best signing of the 2021 season. Last year's winner was James Robinson. Which and, was easy. Oh yeah, that was a runaway. This year, it's a little bit. Uh, more nebulous, more uh, undecided. Good we word. have nice. uh, the nominees are Cordero Patterson, Elijah Mitchell, Rashad Penny, Amon Ross St. Brown, Dol Dr. Schultz, Whoa. and Hunter Renfro. And the winner of the Waiver Wire Wonder is Cordero Patterson. Oh, really? In, I might at a runaway a landslide in a landslide he had 44 percent of the, the the vote but there are more nominees sure. here and uh, the runner-up elijah mitchell was only 17 percent. interesting i wasn't sure uh, how forgiving the the fantasy community would be for cordero patterson because he got you to the playoffs and then if you relied on him during the playoffs you it lost. was it was devastation is that andy did you vote for patterson I did, and I think it, it's one of those things where he was such a – from zero to 100 and got you a, a, such a strong start to the season that you just – you were just set up to, for success, and that was the time the most attention is on these leagues. So Sure. Uh, but I, I was actually – I was surprised it was a runaway like that. I figured you would have more Rashad Penny in there, more Amon Ross St. Brown, um, but the truth is, is, you know, maybe – Maybe there weren't enough teams that, that had those guys at the end that were able to make a difference. So, all right, we're moving on to uh, – what? what are you we're, laughing we're, at? We're, um, so, in our show doc here, as we're following along so everyone knows what we're talking about, uh, the winners are not highlighted. We, we, are, we are finding them out as we open up the envelope, uh, and then they are being marked in the show doc to remind us who won – and this fifth category here is the fantasy wide receiver of the year, which I see has already been marked. <laughs> Someone is definitely calling their shot of who the fantasy wide receiver of the year was. Oh man, that is can that we is cut a to bold... the let's cut to the chase. <laughs> well, at least winner. At least let the, the nominees need to have their time in the sun. So the nominees were Devontae Adams, Debo Samuel. Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and... That's Google. the list of the uh, nominees. Yes, that's the nominees, because the winner, of course, I don't even have to see it. It's not... Yep, at 82% of the vote 
It was Cooper Cup. What's hey, he impressive? was on my guy this year, right? For me, last year. What's oh. impressive is that eighteen percent of people did not vote for Cooper <laughs> this, Cup. This guy over here trying to take last year's fantasy analysis, move it forward, and be like, "See, I totally told you, I Cooper Cup." Don't blame him. <laughs> I would be doing the same thing, and so would you. Listen, Mike, if Jason stole Debo from me this year, Cooper Cup was good for me last year. I'm doing my very best to get a little bit. Of action here. All right. All right. So Debo didn't win that one. Cooper Cup, what, he just under 2,000 yards. I mean, just absolutely unstoppable. He triple crowned it, man. I mean, he had the most passing yards, most receiving or receiving yards, receiving touchdowns and receptions. Did he, he have all three? He had all three. So, man. I mean, his he was award, absolutely dominant. His and award will be hand-delivered by Jason because oh, of, the money, of the money that he earned you. And oh, that's right. Thank you. I forgot. <laughs> Heck yeah, Cooper. Uh, and if you aren't aware, this is a true story. Cooper Cup, giant fan of our Spitballers uh, podcast. So mm -hmm. if you want to be as good as Cooper Cup, you should listen and tune into the Spitballers. Good friend of the show. Uh, well, I, entertainment show. Shouldn't we add that he has absolutely no interest in the fantasy footballers? I mean, isn't that a part of the we story? We could, but that would. That doesn't sound as as, yeah. as good. He does. He's he's not as involved in this show, but he loves uh, the other show. So, and this is the time of year where you get less footballers. So go listen to some spitballers, like Cooper Cup does. I'm thinking he has nothing to learn from us on the football side. I'm thinking Probably that's probably true. But wait the, a minute, <laughs> professional football player Cooper Cup. Uh, <laughs> professional center Nick Mangold. <laughs> uh, Fantasy running back of the year. Uh, for all of these positional awards, we want people to factor in draft position, big game performances, impact on fantasy teams. Derrick Henry won it last year, and uh, he would have won it this year had the season mm -hmm. continued. Uh, so, Mike, if you're looking for the resume, that would be why I think he's going to be a top two pick. But who do we have as nominees? So the nominees are Jonathan Taylor, Austin Eckler, Joe Mixon, Najee Harris, Leonard Fournette, and James Conner. And the winner this year goes to Jonathan Taylor. I uh, think yes. this was another one that was more of a runaway vote, especially with Derrick Henry going down. Jonathan Taylor gets 68% of the vote. The runner-up was awesome, excellent Austin Eckler at 11%. He was fantastic. And I am just happy to know that the uh, in our in our league, our main uh, league of record, there was uh, a team that had both Jonathan Taylor and Austin Eckler, and they did not win the championship. They did not. And I, I want to do a special <clears throat> shout-out here to uh, nominee Joseph Mixon, the possibly the quietest running back three. Oh, my guy, right? He was my guy? Not, uh, not, not uh, this year. Ago. Not this year. It was last year as well. Yeah. Yeah, your hit rate from last year to this year is looking very good. Uh, but running back three overall, he it did start a little bit slow uh, after week one, but then he just he went on a a real tear in the middle of the season, and I said I can't believe he finished as the running back three because you don't you don't think of what he had done on the field to put him there, but it was a fantastic year, three hundred and forty opportunities. The Two Two hundred and nine. Joe Mixon carried the ball two hundred and ninety-two times, and he didn't play in the final week of the season. And the reason that you're highlighting him is because he would be last on my vote list. Like I would right. vote for Jonathan Taylor, Austin Eckler, Najee, Leonard Fournette, and James Conner ahead of him. They all had memorable impacts. Uh, you're right. Joe Mixon was just quietly getting it done for most of the season. Well, and has has a great team. You know, we w one of our writers, uh, Matt DeSorbo, was bringing up the percentage of playoff teams and then the fantasy finishes of their positions and how the majority, like one of my first philosophies as a fantasy player years ago when I started was like, I want guys on teams that are going to win. Yeah. Like that was just a general philosophy. You're going to have better offenses, better opportunities. Mixon wasn't drafted with that certainty. You didn't think of Cincinnati as a team that was definitely going to be a top 15 offense because of Burrow's injury and the the head coach. And, you know, there was a lot of questions. Jamar Chase, what was he going to be? They didn't have an offensive line. So he was one of the, uh, the few players on the team that made that transition in the year that a lot of people didn't see coming. So sure. um, expectations might have been also suppressed from last year's 
disappointment. So uh, a heck of a year for all of these guys. Fantasy tight end of the year. Last year was Travis Kelsey. I believe this one was a runaway as well. How many years in a row did Travis Kelsey win this award? It has to be many because he was the fantasy tight end of the year every year. It's not always that that doesn't necessarily go to the the player who um you know finished number 1 if you're drafting him that way, but he's been such a difference maker at the position for so long that I have to imagine other than maybe the Darren Waller year, Travis well, the Kelsey Well, the won. Kittle year he ended up winning that one uh as well because of the draft capital. Yeah. All right, well, the nominees this year, let's see if Kelsey can do it again. Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, George Kidder, Kidder? George Kidder. Kittle, the <laughs> Dr. Good. Dalton Schultz, and Rob Gronkowski. Gronk, 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 gronk. And the winner <laughs> is Fantasy Tight End of the Year. It was a runaway. It was Mark Andrews at 77% of the votes. Did you both vote for Mark Andrews? You're darn right I did. I did um, not. Yeah, I for really, sure. Really, you did it? I for sure voted for Mark Andrews. He was so unbelievable. He was Travis Kelsey dominant this year, and you didn't have to pay for him in the first. So if you drafted him, if you had him on a roster, I, I had him in two main places, you experienced him. You know, you were on his back for a while. Who did you vote for, Andy? Rob Gronkowski. Hmm. I, I, I understand. When he was actually playing, he was fantastic. But, I mean – how many games did Gronk miss? He, mi he missed a huge chunk, but obviously was really good at the end, really good in the beginning, and that you paid nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was he was free. Yeah. So, but, so that, I mean, so, so you had – He missed so he, five games, but really six because yes. he you know, came what back was for his that one game. Points per game, what was Rob Gronkowski? Because he finished tight end five with missing those games. Uh, do, do we have his points per game finish? Yeah, we can pull 12, that up. 12 points per game. No, not well, how many. Like what? What, what finishes he in points per third? Game? He okay. would have been. He's tight end three in points per game. Okay, so I mean that's pretty amazing for a free tight end. Yes. Um, fancy. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's third in points per game. Yeah. So listen to this. This is this is silly. This is the tight end position. He's third in points per game. Obviously, we have to go points per game because he missed five, basically six games. Right. right. He finished number five overall. That's I, I know. With, with missing all those games, tight ends suck, man. Yeah, that's why I voted for him. Is I is you did you drafted Mark Andrews, and maybe he overperformed his draft position, but you drafted him because you believed Mark Andrews could do this, right? And so for me, Gronkowski was just so. Who was free. the runner up? Uh, we it was not marked. It was not marked. Uh, thanks, guys. So Good job, close. guys. The other ones are all within a percentage of each other. That was wasn't worth it. Who was but. the second highest? Second highest was, <laughs> in fact, Rob Gronkowski at seven percent of the vote. But I mean, Mark wow. Andrews getting him in the I think he was the fourth, uh, if I remember right, his ADP. But to finish off the season with week fourteen, twenty three points, thirty points, twenty two points, twelve points. Like he was, he was a difference maker. If you got into the playoffs, fantasy quarterback of the year, same considerations, draft position, big game performances. We talked yesterday or uh, two days ago on the nominating show, just how close we thought this one would be. So I'm excited I have to find no out the idea winner. Who won. No, I don't. I don't either. But uh, the, uh, go ahead and read the nominees. Yeah, the nominees this year were Josh Allen, the quarterback one, Justin Herbert, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, and Jalen Hurts. An entire list where any single one of them deserved. A vote, and the winner of quarterback of the year goes to Tom Brady with thirty seven percent. It was it was a pretty. I mean, the plant man. It was a pretty decisive victory. It, the, my guy. It was that actually that was, was yeah! a my guy. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we did it. Uh, all the runner ups were so, so close uh, together, but Jalen Hurts was the. Jalen Hurts was my vote. Was the second place at 18%. You had Herbert at 17%. Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, 14 and 13. So they were all right there, but Tom Brady, you drafted him super duper late. He was great all season and uh, worthy of this year's footy. And your footy is in the mail. 
He may entry. actually turn that one down just with the amount of other awards he already has. There yeah, might not be. How dare you, Andy? He I might just, get rid of some of his other awards. What is this? An NFL MVP? I don't need that. Move over, NFL MVP. I got a footy coming in the freight. <laughs> All right. Breakout player of the year. Which which player was fantasy football's breakout player this season? Last year it was DK Metcalf. Who could have won the breakdown Ooh. player of the year? Oh if, no, we couldn't. He was fine. Yeah. Not very good. Uh, and the nominees this year, Jamar Chase, Najee Harris, Jalen Hurts, Damian Harris, Debo Samuel, and Cordero. Did you just call him Patterson. Damian Harris? Damian Harris. Did I, did right. I call him a bad word? <laughs> it sounded like it, but I mean. Whatever. I mean, I'm just explaining him what I saw on the field. It was, dang, that's pretty good. The winner, <laughs> the breakout player of the year. Oh my! It was very close. It Debo? was very close. Is it Debo? Within, within ten percentage points, the winner was Debo Samuel. I love it. I love it. He was definitely the breakout player. I, obviously, Jamar Chase and Najee—they broke out, but they broke in. You know, when there's a player like Debo, who, you know, what is this? Is his third year, fourth year in the league, and just dominated. I mean, he deserved this because he should have he should have like been a wide receiver of the year candidate, but Cooper Cup said not allowed. That's that's mine. So I'm so happy Debo won this award because whoo doggy. I saw your uh, highlight uh, yeah. tweet, Andy. I watched the whole thing of Debo's highlights. I I still don't understand how no one can wrap their arms around him on first attempt ever. <laughs> He's so talented. I mean, if he if he converted to running back tomorrow, he'd be a top five pick in the fantasy draft. If that if he was a full time running back, I mean, he's just so sure. Uh, you build your offense around him, and you it's like Cooper Cup. Yeah, they'll stop him eventually. No, you don't. You can't no. stop him. You can't. Do, you, oh, it's going to him. I mean, that play where he threw the touchdown that worked because he's he's such a good running back. That he comes around the edge, they're like, "Oh my gosh, he's going to do it again around the edge!" And then the entire defense came up, and it was it was easy. He is very good, and he led the NFL in yards per catch. So he's a, one of the best receivers, running backs, and he stayed healthy, and that was a humongous um, uh, factor. The ADP of Cup and Debo is going to be so fascinating because they I mean, they will skyrocket and be what second round. Cup? Yeah. Oh first, man, I will first. take I will take Cup in the first round in every league. He will be my number one wide receiver off the board for sure. Man, I just, I couldn't imagine getting out of the first round without having Cooper Cup personally. Just, just repeating that type of a season is very difficult. Oh, for sure, but um I don't think he has to repeat what he did this year. If he if he comes if he does 80% of what he did this year, he's worth sure. the first round right. pick. The next category is the rookie of the year. Last year's winner, shockingly, was Justin Jefferson. The nominees for this year are Najee Harris, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, Kyle Pitts, and Pat Fryer Muth. Oh, come on, Pat. Come on, Pat. Can the Muth, you got this. Can he get that Luth to win the rookie of the year? I'm guessing no. Yeah. The winner is by a humongous margin, which that is the surprising part. It is Jamar Chase. Really? At 75% of the vote, which is crazy considering how good Najee Harris was. You had a you had a top five wide receiver and a top five running back in their rookie years, both of them deserving of the category. I think this is a little disrespectful to Najee, but what Jamar Chase did in the playoffs. Yeah, I think no, that it's, did it's, it. it's more than that. It's draft capital. Everyone expected Najee to be fair. a difference maker, but some people didn't expect Jamar Chase to be a difference maker. Yeah, I mean, Najee was drafted in the, the back of the first, early second, whereas Jamar Chase was a, was a fifth-round pick. They're both awesome. Congratulations, Jamar Chase. Your footy is on a semi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a little surprised it was that big of a blowout. You Where? know, Na Najee had is the inverse, too, in the playoffs. I mean, Najee had two or three games uh, that were essentially duds, his only real duds of the year, 
right um in the playoff weeks or 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 nearby so i think that 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 impact was probably felt oh it certainly was just jamar had a like a fantastic year i mean over 1400 yards and 13 touchdowns but he had a lull there in the middle yes, of he the did. season he did yeah but I guess when you win championships, people don't care about the low in the middle of the season. Which is why they should be thankful for DK Metcalf, Mike. He had a low. And then <laughs> oh, he, won, he had a low. And then he won you a championship with three touchdowns. Uh, well, not me because Dalvin Cook couldn't score nine. But anyways, comeback player of the year. <laughs> Which fantasy player amazed you the most in their return to relevance? Alex Smith won it last year. This year's nominees were Leonard Fournette, James Conner, Zach Ertz, and Matthew Stafford. Oh, very interesting. The winner of the comeback player of the year. Very tight race. We had six percentage points between first and second place. The winner, James Conner of your Arizona Cardinals. The runner-up was Leonard Fournette. But James Conner, I mean, I get it. Both these guys were drafted around the same area, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. eighth, ninth round. James Conner. Is this who you vote? Did you vote for Conner? Did you vote for? Who I, did you vote for? I voted for James Conner on this one. I I think it was well deserving. You you lead, you know, the amount of touchdowns he got, um, the value that he provided, the in, surprising involvement in the passing game. I mean, all those things are are also true of Leonard Fournette, but I think they were just stronger with James Conner. Plus, I'm a Cardinals fan, so I mean, James <laughs> the, Conner. Where'd you go, Andy? Where'd you take your vote? I believe I voted Fournette on this one, but I I, I, I think that Connor is worthy of it, and it, it's so strange because every year you have a handful of players where there's a is the breakout real phase of these situations, or is the sure. comeback real in this case? And so you had several weeks, I think, in the beginning when people were like, "Well, I can't play him again, can I?" I mean, he's just falling into the end zone. He can't do. He's not going to score all year long. He's Chase Edmonds is going to steal away, and then all of a sudden it was just too real. Right. And and once it was and people just locked him in, he still delivered. So it was it was an amazing season for James Conner, and he's gonna make himself some cash money. He is. He is the playoff king, the new category, the playoff king Ooh. footy. Uh which player drove fantasy managers to a championship during the playoff weeks? Tons of nominees, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Rashad Penny, Devin Singletary, Amon Ross St. Brown, Devontae Adams, and Mark Andrews. You ready, Jason? Oh, man. I was born for this moment. <laughs> Introducing the playoff king. Amon Ra St. Oh, Brown. What? Who, who surprisingly dominated 41% of the vote. My vote went to Joe Burrow. For the unfathomable quarterback, quarterback one, quarterback one finish to the year. But he was second place with only 19% of the vote. I guess when you have a guy off the waiver wires who is a wide receiver one every single week of the playoffs. Wide you mean, receiver six, seven, and two. I mean, it was Do you mean the player, the player that finished with more points per game than CeeDee Lamb on the year? Is that who you're talking about? Wow, is that true? Ooh, baby. Man, he was so dominant at the end of the season. His see, he will be to me the like one of the most fascinating players going into next year because he was awesome. the The breakout seems to happen, but it also happened, you know, there when you didn't have T.J. Hawkinson and DeAndre Swift. On. Remember how dominant Brandon Ayuk was at the end of his rookie year, and then yep. oh well, he didn't have Debo for some of that. He didn't have Kittle, but he but he showed it on the field. He was great. So it's like. What will be the story on the Detroit right. Lions? For and next he scored season? a touchdown every single week. So it's like, is Amon Ross St. Brown really a 17 touchdown, 18 touchdown player? We all know the answer to that is no. So what's his true value next mm -hmm. year? Yeah. All right. The steal of the draft, the absolute best value in the 2021 fantasy draft compared to their ADP. Last year was Stephon Diggs. This year's nominees, Mike, who are they? We had Cooper Cup in the back of the fourth as the wide receiver 18. Debo Samuel drafted as the wide receiver 34. Mm. Leonard Fournette, running back 33. And James Conner as the running back 36. And the winner, the steal no, of the no, draft. No. Wait, I have the wrong card. The steal I of the draft. 
It's got to be Debo. The steal of the draft is Debo Samuel at 47%, Cooper Cup at 35%. Uh, I mean, a three-round gap difference. I, it totally makes sense there that Debo was the winner of this award. Uh, yeah, I, I I voted for Cooper Cup still just because of how dominant, but th they, they're both deserving. And, and a seventh, I guess a seventh rounder, maybe that is actually, what, what was the points per game gap between the wide receiver one and the wide receiver two here in uh, Debo and Cooper Cup? Let me pull up a fancy I don't think I, think, I don't think on points per game it's that different. So Cooper Cup points per game. And this this goes through it's week three eighteen. Yeah, yeah, three points a game. Twenty one point six for Cooper Cup and eighteen point eight for Debo Samuel. That's crazy. Oh, all right, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> you guys ready to get into the uh, the final two oh. very very illustrious awards? This is the good stuff. It's time for the nickname of the year. <laughs> and the nominees are. Elijah Missile, General Mills, played by Davis Mills, Koopa <laughs> Cup of Coffee, Fireball Jones, also known as Tim Patrick, or Javante's Inferno for Javante Williams, The Doctor made an appearance, Dr. Schultz, The Muth was Luth, Pat Fryer Muth, Michael Pittman Jr. was Pity City, Tony Jones Jr., Tony, Tony Brooks, James Jones Jr., and, of course, Matt Nagy was the budget magician. Hoo-ha-ha! -ha! Timed out almost perfectly, Jason. Thank you. So and you, you didn't stretch enough at the end. Hoo-ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> Needed more noises. For the first time ever, we had people select their three favorites, which I think is the absolute best way to do this award anyways. But um, I am curious who you who gentlemen. Got <laughs> well, yes, that and who you guys voted for. But go ahead and give us the winner. Well, the winner, of course, for the nickname of the year was Pretty Luth. <laughs> he was Pat Fryer Muth. The Muth was Super Luth. 82% of the vote. The Muth is Luth. Um, if you want to know who was behind him, which it doesn't even matter at this point, I was surprised that the number two was Koopa Cup of Coffee. Really? Yeah. People, Koopa Cup of Coffee. People was, fire, I mean, was Fireball Jones three? Do you have three? Fireball Jones was three. Mm. That's the one that surprised me the most was that people really attached to the Fireball. Yeah. Well, I mean... That name is B.A., guys. Fireball <laughs> Jones. It's awesome. Um, and every year, I, I think we need to fully just completely rename a person that we we find their name to pedestrian. So, Well, sometimes you got to rebrand. Sometimes it works out. Smash like Jackson said so. Well, Smash Jackson did not work out, but Tim Patrick got himself the bag. That's true. And a cool name. Yeah, All Smash right. Jackson was never going to. No name was going to be enough. We tried our hardest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Paul Perkins. I was trying is... to remember the real name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That brings us into the final award of the evening. The fantasy footballers moment of the year. What was the Foot Clan's favorite moment from 2021? Last year's winner was our wives surprising us on episode 1000. A very special moment for all. This year's nominees for show moment of the year. The Dynasty Pants, where Jason could not stop talking or thinking about pants. The producers combining to sing the most horrific mail drop, mailbag drop you've ever heard. Jason reacting in real time to Christian McCaffrey's injury. Big Ben taking a snap and thinking about cheeseburgers. A listener calling in a voicemail only to make a very simple mistake that was highlighted by Brooks, who wanted to point out this listener as a nincompoop. Andy winning the Millie Maker. Jason with the coldest take ever of Cortland Sutton's contract. Al Borland dunking on us. After the Packers beat the Cardinals, the wheel of shame fish face. Or the dinner butter moment on the Megalodon show, which made it trending on Twitter. The number two overall trending moment of the day 
Hashtag dinner butter. Of the Thanksgiving weekend. We don't know how that happened. But that was awesome. Oh, drum roll. I'm excited. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got to get it. Oh, do you got it? <laughs> the winner. Whoa. By 1.6 percentage points. The winner. The show moment of the year. Hashtag dinner butter oh, oh, oh. from the Megalodon show was the moment of the year narrowly beating wow. out Owl dunking on the fantasy footballer. Take that, Al Borland. You thought you had the show of the year. You did it. You get no footy. Dinner butter wins. He we dunk back on you. He lost the moment of the year just like he lost to Andy in the fantasy <laughs> football playoffs. What a loser. And now let's uh, let's take a moment to remember the dinner butter moment of the year. And then the role that he has inherited, keep in mind they paid him a lot of money, has gone to one dude at all times. Ricky Seals Jones just took that spot and was used and was relevant for fantasy, and he's not as good as Logan Thomas. When Logan Thomas comes back, he's just going into that full-time role and will be, you know, a, a, I feel like a, a weekly top five start. I agree, and I do plan on inheriting a number of roles on Thanksgiving Day. Oh, for, for what it's yeah. worth. So much dinner butter. <laughs> dinner butter? Dinner rolls, is that different butter than lunch rolls. butter? Oh, dinner butter is way different. <laughs> dinner butter is always it's, whipped. It's, uh, you oh, know. Dinner butter is a step up? It's left. Oh, yeah. You don't want lunch butter. You ever had that. breakfast butter? Breakfast butter is cold and hard. It's dumb. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? No. I, no. No, this is all just made up because I said dinner butter. <laughs> But uh, I love me some rolls. Oh, and that's the that's the we need to focus there. <laughs> All right, the Footy Awards have come to a conclusion. Thank you so much for voting and listening this past season. We've got the Truth episodes coming up next week. Very excited to find out the truth, Mike, and to debate yes. the truth. I mean, so if if we know anything about things these days, it's that you can completely debate the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the truth is a difficult thing to find. Oh, sometimes. it'll be fun. But we're going to find it. Yeah, we will find it. Do not forget about footclanchallenge.com if you want to participate. It's completely free. It's just a fun uh, set of lineup for the, the playoffs. And uh, and also, just real quick, we were nominated for some sports podcast awards. You can find the links on our Twitters out there. If you have a moment to just go register and vote for us for a couple awards, we'd really appreciate that. I'll bet Andy can update footclanvote.com to easily forward to that Sure, spot. we could so probably do that. He's doing it right now. Go to footclanvote.com, <laughs> register, and also hey. when you vote, just know that the the user interface is very poor. The it's, button is hidden at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, we, uh, we, we didn't design the website. No, we did but, not. But we like winning awards, just like... Cooper Cup likes winning awards. So that is going to do it for today's show, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, thank guys. Thank you for joining us. What's can up? I, can, can I come back into the studio next week? Probably oh, not. Right. You've no. been banished from the land. We'll see you next week. Foot Clan, goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.